Hey everyone, John Lorden. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Brain Scratch Searchlight. This is your original case for the week. This is one that we haven't gone into before. I know I've been hitting you guys with a lot of updates. Before we get started on today's case, I do want to mention next week we are doing a bit of a special event in terms of Searchlight. We're doing a crossover episode with Danielle Hallen's channel. So keep an eye out this Saturday for her video to release about the case of Noah Davis. Please be sure to check that out because I'm not going to be retreading a bunch of the same information that she covers in that video. In my video next week, we're going to be interviewing his brother and trying to tackle some interesting discrepancies that have been brought to my attention, but really trying to focus on putting together uh, just a clear view of what this case is about, which is very challenging with this case. And I'll get into more of that on Johnny Vlogs uh, next week, as well as, of course, the episode once it comes around. So be sure to check that out. Today's case is one that is... It's a little bit of a heartbreaker because um, the way I'm looking at it, the possible scenarios we have here aren't very good. Uh, we're looking at a case where someone could have potentially left the situation, kind of walked away, and they've just been out of touch for a little over a month now. Um, we're looking at a situation where someone could have gotten hurt in the wilderness uh, and has not been found for a month now. Very very kind of convoluted case in terms of the media interpretation of it. There's just not a whole lot that is being repeated outside of what uh, the police is generally releasing to the press. Uh, there is no kind of deep investigative reporter that has been pushing into this case from at least from the coverage that I can see. So uh, it's a challenging one. Let's uh, let's take a look at this together and see if we can make some sense out of the disappearance of Shantae LeRae Pankey. Uh, and when I was originally looking at this, I thought that her first name might be Shanta. Um, someone at Web Sleuths uh, claims that they know someone that knows her and that she actually pronounced it Shantae. And according to one of her Facebook profiles, it looks like that might actually be the case. Before I get into the details here, uh, I just wanted to highlight something in case you're ever faced with having a missing loved one. Uh, this poster in particular is using photos that aren't very good. These are top down what I consider uh, social media selfie photos. Admittedly, people do that because they look better from these angles. But in terms of actually seeing them in person, they more often than not don't actually look like this. So these are not the best photos. Uh, let me just jump to here are some more practical photos, I think, in terms of understanding what she actually looks like. Um, I still I appreciate, you know, organizations that put together these posters, they usually do them for the families, I get it. Um, but just these photos in particular, I don't know how helpful they are. If you were to actually bump into her somewhere, would you recognize her based off these photos? I kind of struggle with that. But uh, anyway, back to the details. Shantae LeRae Pankey, age 25, missing April 15th, 2018 from Grangeville, Idaho, uh, five foot four, about 135 pounds, brown eyes and red or also known as auburn hair. Uh, Shantae was on a camping trip when she went missing. Shantae was last seen wearing blue jeans, a blue and green tank top, and pink cowgirl boots with a square toe. She was carrying a brown leather purse. Shantae had no personal belongings. I think they mean no other personal belongings because typically her purse and whatever's in it uh, would be considered personal belongings. But no other personal belongings, no cell phone with her. Uh, Shantae has both ears pierced multiple times from what I understand uh, and a tattoo of the cancer zodiac symbol on her right thigh and hip. Shantae also has a scar above one of her eyebrows. It doesn't say which one, unfortunately, and based on the photos, I really couldn't tell you myself. Of course, they have contact information. Thankfully, they have the case information as well. I will include that in the description box below just in case you have seen this person, uh, Shantae, anywhere and want to send in information or perhaps you have some tip about what happened to her. Let's continue at NamUs, see if we can understand some more details of this case. Um, all the same info here, Shantae LeRae Pankey. Uh, date last seen April 15th. They don't have a time entered here, but from what I understand, it was around 10 a.m. is the time that she is last seen. Uh, 25 years old, white female, same information in terms of height and weight. 
Uh, Shantae went camping on the Salmon River with her boyfriend. She walked away from the campsite near Pine Bar. Uh, Pine Bar, from what I understand, is actually some type of like camping recreation area or something like that. It's not not a literal bar, which is kind of <laughs> where my mind went when I first heard that and started looking for it. Uh, she may have been seen walking up the nearby Rice Creek Road, which is about three miles from the Salmon River. Um, that would be, you know, three miles is a pretty hefty walk. And especially in difficult terrain, I would say that that would certainly take her at least an hour, if not a little longer than that. Might have been uh, a bit of a serious disagreement she was having with her boyfriend. I'll, I'll see if we can find some more detail on that. Uh, as noted, red auburn hair, brown eyes uh, for the scar. It's over her right eye, small scar over her right eye. Once again, notes the cancer sign tattoo. Uh, I believe it's probably this one. I actually looked up specifically cancer sign tattoos, and there's a lot of different variations on the art style, but this is a very simple version of the Cancer Zodiac. So it would at least look something like this. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find any photos of her actual tattoo. Ears with multiple piercings. Her navel is also pierced and her tongue was pierced at one time. Uh, other than that, we don't have anything else noted. For her clothing, uh, echoing the same information we've heard, tank top, green and blue, and blue jeans. Uh, cowboy boots, pink and tan with pink uppers, uh, fit a little sloppy, uh, normal shoe size of nine and a half women's, um, pierced ears, unknown earrings. She likes rings usually on her ring finger and index finger also known to wear a silver chain necklace. And for accessories, they mentioned large brown leather purse with some fabric or metal bling see in the uploaded pictures. We'll definitely take a look at those once we get to it. Obviously, no transportation methods. She literally walked away from the campsite and hasn't been seen. Uh, dental information looks like they're still collecting that. Uh, for DNA, looks like they're collecting that as well. No fingerprint information available. And uh, here are the pictures. Uh, two of them are pictures that we were already looking at. This is the picture that actually shows her bag. Um, and it's obviously some type of hotel security camera, I would guess, or maybe an apartment security camera. Um, unfortunately, the quality is not very good, so very tough to kind of make out her bag, but uh, this is at least the size, at least from this picture, you could tell the approximate size of the bag there. I'm not positive that this is her boyfriend. I think that's probably an assumption that most of us would make, but I have no idea who this person is here. And uh, unfortunately to date, no information about him has really been released. Um, once again, they have investigating agency here. They've also got the case number. I will have that contact information in the description box below. In terms of Facebook profiles, uh, it looks like she actually had two. Uh, there's this one, which uh, as many of you know, I'm not a Facebook user and it's either been locked down or it just was never kind of fully filled out. I did also find what I believe is, is a Twitter profile for her. It looks like she literally used it for like two or three tweets a couple years ago. I don't know if she just wasn't that big in social media. But one thing that's interesting that we can uh, gain from this picture is uh, that is her daughter and her daughter is six years old. And I'm sure her daughter is wondering where her mother is. The second profile, we get a little more information. Once again, highlighting her daughter a bit more. Another picture of her, uh, as well as some more photos of her. We see that she went to Lewiston High School in Idaho, and that's been her current city and basically her hometown. So unfortunately, like I mentioned before, there hasn't been a really good investigator in terms of media uh, looking into this. Uh, so we really don't have a whole lot of backstory on Shantae. We don't know a whole lot about her outside of the fact that uh, she is a mother. And from what I understand, her mother is the one that actually called her in as missing. So uh, obviously, we've got a few people in her life that are seriously missing her. And of course, a boyfriend, which according to, once again, unconfirmed information from Web Sleuths, uh, she was living with her boyfriend at this time as well. So certainly several people that should be concerned about uh, where she is and trying to bring her home. Jumping over to IdahoCountyFreePress.com. 
uh, we're going to get some more information. So this is an update as of Monday, April 23rd, so uh, about a week, a little more than a week after she disappeared. According to an update released today by the Idaho County Sheriff's Office, detectives and deputies are continuing to investigate all aspects of this case and are requesting assistance from the public. They're specifically asking the public, if you saw Shantae after midnight Sunday morning, April 15th, anywhere in north central Idaho, or if you have information about a man and a dog with a green pickup with Utah plates and a camper that was at Pine Bar the weekend of April and 14th and 15th, to contact them at 208-983-1100. Um, I think it's kind of curious that they are trying to uh, track down where she was specifically after midnight on Sunday morning, April 15th, which uh, according to the story that we know, she wouldn't go missing for another 10 hours at that point, but they're specifically asking anywhere in North Central Idaho. Leads me to believe that they might not be believing the story that they were told by the boyfriend, or at least they're looking to confirm it in some way. It might not be that they don't trust his story, but they're certainly looking to confirm it or discount it if they were seen somewhere else. Uh, Panky has no cell phone or vehicle and has made no contact with family members. You know, one of the reasons why I cover these cases is because I want us to learn from these situations. And I just want to put out there that if you're in a strange place, even not a strange place, even if you're somewhere where you feel like it's familiar to you and you feel safe, if you have an argument with someone and you're walking away, um, please be sure to take your cell phone. Now, I, I, from what I'm gathering here, it's that she actually didn't have one. It's not that she didn't take it. So uh, in this situation, it gets really tough. Maybe in these situations, even if you are upset at the person that you're there with, it's best not to go, you know, walking off uh, in the middle of kind of uncharted territory like this. It's just, it's one of the things I think we have to look at in this case and hopefully try to learn from because it's really unfortunate that there is literally no way to trace her. Um, and we don't know where she is, obviously. So let's continue with more details here. Panky was reportedly last seen on foot near Pine Bar along the Salmon River on Sunday, April 15th, about 10 a.m. Uh, according to Johnson, she and a boyfriend were camping at the site. Uh, I believe Johnson is actually the uh, yeah detective, Jerry Johnson from the Idaho County Sheriff's Office. Uh, the pair had a minor disagreement and it was reported she decided to go on a walk. Every instance that I've seen that's talking about this case says that it was a minor disagreement, but we have no additional details there. Uh, for me to think about a situation where I need to take a walk away from someone, I don't really consider that a minor disagreement. Uh, and admittedly, we all have different levels and different amounts of you know what we can take before we feel like we have to take a walk in a situation like that. Uh, I'm just curious that it's being worded in this way. I don't know why the word minor has to be in there at all. How about the pair had a disagreement and it was reported that she walked away or decided to go on a walk? Um, I, I don't know. Obviously, the authorities know more in this case. Maybe they know some details specifically about what the fight was about. Maybe it was about something trivial and in their minds, it's minor. Uh, I'd be more curious to know if that was how the boyfriend was actually describing it, that it was a minor disagreement. But unfortunately, we cannot draw that conclusion with the way this information is being presented to us. ICSO was contacted Monday afternoon, April 16th, by Panky's mother, who reported her missing after she had not picked up her child. Now, that is a very interesting point. Uh, even not knowing what's going on in terms of the boyfriend's point of view in this story, something seems strange to me when they're saying that she was last seen at 10 a.m. at Pine Bar. So obviously she actually walked away from the campsite sometime before that. Sometime on Sunday morning, they had this minor disagreement and she walks away. It goes all the way till Monday afternoon before she's actually reported missing. Why? What is going on with the boyfriend during this time? Is he searching for her? Is he kind of out there looking for her? Even if we assume that he actually went searching for her, don't you think that by the time it was starting to get dark or hopefully a little bit before that, you would have uh, gone and tried to get some help out there to help you try to find her? 
Why did this go all the way to Monday afternoon? Why was the fact that she didn't pick up her child, the trigger for her disappearance being noticed is very strange to me. It's also a big point of contention in terms of the web sleuth thread, which is not a giant thread, but several people are raising it as a point. I think it's a very good point to be raised. Uh, where was the call for help here? Why did it come in so late? And even when it is reported, why is it still not coming from the boyfriend that actually watched her walk away and noticed that she probably wasn't back at the campsite? Very, very curious about that. Searchers have initially focused efforts on the roadway and ditches of her last known route. Uh, if, she have may, if she may have taken a wrong step and become injured, a river search is also planned. So... Um, scary circumstances, guys. I mean, you know, I look into these cases a lot and whenever you're adding these types of elements right off the bat, um, that someone could be in a situation where they might have hurt themselves in some way and they're in an unfamiliar area, it just, it raises the risk around these cases so much. And uh, once again, I just ask that if you're ever in a situation like this, please, please, please be smart. Please don't go walking off on your own. Now here at ktvb.com, we get some information that kind of blows my mind in one way. I'll tell you why. Uh, no answers as search for missing Grangeville woman enters second week. Listen to this next sentence here. Deputies pinged the Grangeville woman's cell phone. Let me just stop there. Uh, where is that information coming from? I don't know. Uh, all the other information I'm seeing is she literally did not have a cell phone. Uh, I think it's noted in posters. It's noted in some of the earlier articles. I don't know if this is a goof. I kind of don't think it is because the rest of the details of this sentence uh, seem like this person actually talked to the uh, the police there and they or the sheriff's office and they actually shared this info. Let me finish the sentence and we'll get back to it. Deputies ping the Grangeville woman's cell phone, reviewed video, interviewed family members, and searched the Salmon River and surrounding area, enlisting the help of other agencies and local residents. It doesn't sound to me like that is a statement. Uh, that was made up by someone. It sounds to me like uh, they actually got a hold of someone at the sheriff's office and were told this. So I'm not sure about this discrepancy. Of course, I have to point it out to you guys. Did she have a phone? Didn't she have a phone? I don't know. Uh, if they truly pinged her phone and if it was with her, they would at least have some general idea of the area that she was in. Uh, would it make sense for them to still go asking for tips on, hey, if they were seen anywhere in northern Idaho, if they actually had a bit more of a centralized location? Probably not. Is it possible that they pinged her phone and it showed up somewhere completely wacky and that's why they're asking for that kind of tip? I don't know. I'm just trying to share my thoughts with you guys as we're looking through all this because quite honestly, there's little solid detail. Uh, the search has come up empty. She just disappeared, Sheriff Doug Giddings said. The lack of evidence in this case makes it difficult to rule out any possibility, the sheriff said. Panky could have fallen into the swift moving river, climbed up the mountain, left the state intentionally, or been a victim of foul play. Uh, and worth noting, they are pretty close to, I know they're close to Washington. Uh, I don't know how close they are to Oregon, but um, it is feasible. I mean, it's it, it would be a heck of a walk, but it is feasible that she could have actually left the state and got into Washington uh, pretty easily in terms of the area that, that they were in. Um, from that moment that she disappeared, we have no clue, Giddings said. Why would she just walk away? Why would she just disappear? We have no answers. Even the leads that are trickling into the sheriff's office are a little thin. Sightings of Panky have been reported as far away as Seattle, but none have borne out, the sheriff said. Over at the Lewiston Tribune, we get a little more information about this green pickup truck. Uh, it was a man with a dog that had the green pickup truck with Utah license plates, uh, and he was actually camped near where she disappeared. Uh, he was camped at Pine Bar Recreation Site on that particular weekend. And from what I understand, 
uh, by Monday morning, he was gone. Now, uh, police were fairly clear in the media that I've reviewed here. They don't think that he's necessarily involved in her disappearance, but they do think that he might have information that could help them. Uh, of course, when you hear that you know he's gone the next morning, the morning that she's noticed missing, I think that some of us would consider maybe maybe he could be involved in some way. Even though there hasn't been really great coverage in this case, I do want to call out the Idaho County Free Press for doing uh, consistent coverage with this case. Foul play or walked away, investigation continues with Pankey search. Uh, we still don't know if there's foul play involved and by whom or if she just walked away, said Detective Jerry Johnson, Idaho County Sheriff's Office. But as more time goes by without her communicating with her family and her daughter, the odds are much higher that foul play may be involved. Uh, let me just say, I think he's making a good point there. We have to remember that this is a woman that is leaving behind uh, a six-year-old daughter. Now, does that happen in some cases? Do people leave of their own accord and leave their children behind? Yes. Is it the majority of the time? I don't have exact stats on that, but I wouldn't think so. So I do think that that's kind of an important consideration we can keep in mind while we're looking at this. Johnson said investigators have had a good response from the public, from businesses with information and assistance in search efforts, and we are very appreciative. Uh, location efforts last week involved a foot search by ICSO personnel and family members. Johnson said the shortest way out of the area is by road, so a search was conducted along both sides of the roadway, up the river, and all the way to the prairie. No sign was found. Water searches were conducted the following days with an individual volunteering his time to search by jet boat. Quote, he covered quite a bit of area and found no sign, Johnson said. Um, it always lifts my heart to hear when there are volunteers that are willing to do things like that. Um, and in these cases, people that care are needed. And it's, it's just great to see that people do rally around things like this. Uh, in terms of the green pickup, there's no reason to believe this person was involved, Johnson said, but we're not ruling anything out. We want to talk with as many people as we can who were on the river in this time frame. We're still trying to accumulate as much information as we can, Johnson said, which includes surveillance video that may show Panky's movements before she and the boyfriend went to the river. As well, we're trying to find any record of her using financial transaction cards, food stamp cards, or anything like that. We've been striking out on that. We've been finding no use since her disappearance, which of course is once again a very big cause for concern. On May 3rd, 2018 at dnews.com, we get some more information. Idaho County detectives have been following up on what appears to be a credible lead in the disappearance of Shantae L. Pankey. Uh, Detective Jerry Johnson said a man called the sheriff's office Thursday told the officers he and his family had been camped in the Joseph Plains area, about 25 miles southwest of Cottonwood, and were driving along Rice Creek. The man reported seeing a woman walking up the road about three miles from where the creek flows into the Salmon River. The caller described the woman as someone who looked like somebody out of their element, Johnson said. The caller said she was wearing a tank top, no jacket, carrying a large purse and wearing shoes that were not hiking shoes. Now, I'm curious in terms of the shoe description here because pink boots, it seems to me, would really register in someone's mind. But here we're getting this description of, yeah, she's wearing shoes and I'm certain they're not hiking shoes. Instead of that, wouldn't you just say, yeah, she was wearing pink boots. I remember she was wearing pink boots. If you remember enough that they weren't proper hiking shoes, I think you'd remember pink boots. So I'm a little leery of this tip on the outset. Uh, let me also say that several people at Web Sleuths were looking into the weather at this area, and they were saying that it was probably around 30 degrees, uh, relatively cold. So it's interesting that she goes walking off uh, with no jacket and wearing only a tank top as well. At first, Johnson said, the man and his companions didn't think much more about it, but after hearing news reports and seeing a photo, the caller thought the woman he saw might be Panky. Since then, Johnson said he and other searchers have been combing the area around the reported sighting. An earlier report of a man in a green pickup truck with Utah license plates was checked out but found not to be related to the case, Idaho County Sheriff Doug Giddings said. 
So unfortunately, the green pickup truck is tracked down and does not pan out in terms of being helpful to the case. Uh, I believe that they probably also figured that he was not involved in her abduction or they wouldn't uh, have release this information in this way. On Monday, two cadaver dog teams from Clearwater County assisted searchers and had two alerts toward the top of the Rice Creek grade. Quote, we found several dead animals, but we still don't think we found the source of one of the dog's alerts, he said. Johnson said he definitely could smell something, but the rainy weather impeded the search. Detectives plan to return to the area when the weather is drier. And here uh, they also note, I think this is the first article that actually mentions, uh, Pankey has a six-year-old daughter who attends school in Grangeville, but is now staying with family members in the Lewiston area. Uh, and that information was as of May 3rd. I really have not seen any updates on that. So I don't know if the weather has cleared and they've gotten back out there yet or not. Um, but I'll certainly keep an eye on that and let you guys know if something changes. Here we have a very interesting development also reported on May 3rd. This is over at spokesman.com. Cowboy boot found near beach deepens mystery. Police are trying to determine whether a cowboy boot found north of Chestnut Beach in Clarkston belongs to a missing Idaho County woman. Uh, let me just bring up a map for you guys real quick. So here we get Rice Creek Road. Uh, we've mentioned that a couple times in the articles that we've been talking about. Here is the Pine Bar area, and this is the Salmon River, this blue line that's cutting up right through all this. They're talking about this boot being found over 70 miles away. Chestnut Beach is up here and is literally right on the border of Washington and Idaho. One side of the beach is actually uh, in the state of Washington. Now, what I was wondering, uh, and even the article is alluding to this as well, is would it be possible for the boot to have traveled uh, Salmon River? And you can see it's kind of windy, so this would definitely be adding mileage. It would probably be, I don't know, maybe... 85, 90 miles once you're taking all this. Uh, Salmon River connects to Snake River here. Snake River then continues north and it eventually widens out uh, up here and that's where Chestnut Beach is. So there is, it, there does appear to be a connection uh, in terms of the water sources from where she was last seen to where this boot uh, was located. A woman's pink and brown Ariet boot was turned into the Asotin County Sheriff's Office this week after it was discovered upside down on a tree limb along the Greenbelt Trail on the Washington side of the Snake River. A Soton County detective, Jackie Nichols, said the boot was wet and appeared to have been in the water. Shantae L. Pankey, who has been missing since mid-April, was last seen wearing a similar pair of boots. And... Thank you to uh, someone at Web Sleuths that posted a link to it. Here is a picture of the boot as it was found. Uh, it certainly does look like it's pink to me. It does look like the upper in particular is pink. Unfortunately for this photo, the tip is cut off. And if you remember the description properly, um, they talked about it being a square tipped boot. But unfortunately, we, we aren't able to see it here in this picture, which is kind of maddening to me. That would have been a bit of a critical detail. Uh, this was posted on Facebook by Big Country News Connection. The possibility of Panky's boot drifting downstream to Clarkston is now part of the investigation. The Asotin County Sheriff's Office is asking anyone who may have lost a similar boot to contact Nichols at 509-758-2331. Uh, is this her boot? I don't know. I don't know. It's a heck of a trip that it took, uh, if it is. I mean, that is just an amazing amount of distance to be covered. I don't even know if the water flows in the right direction for, a, for it to have been carried all that way. Um, but obviously, they're not ruling it out. So there's, there's definitely a chance that it did make that trip. And unfortunately, that's about it for the information in terms of articles on this case. Like I told you guys, there's just there's not a whole lot of detail to crack into here. Um, there is a web sleuth thread, as I mentioned. It's only about four pages, but I'll have a link to that in the description box below as well. Here's where I turn it over to you guys. What are we looking at here? 
Is this a situation where um, it's like we've heard from the boyfriend that there was some type of minor disagreement? She gets upset, wants to go for a walk, uh, maybe gets lost on the walk, maybe gets injured uh, trying to find her way back, something along those lines. Um, I think obviously we have to consider that. That's the story. That's the official story, I guess we would call it. Uh, outside of that, is there something else at play here? I'm really stuck on that information about when the missing persons gets called in and the fact that it's being called in by her mom. Why did the boyfriend not seek help? Uh, I also find it interesting that none of the news sources are reporting the boyfriend's name, which to me says that the police are keeping the boyfriend's name private as well. Are they doing that because he is some type of person of interest or under consideration for something involved in this case? Uh, I, I would think the likelihood of that is probably strong. Uh, even if he, even if it turns out that he is not related to her disappearance at all, I think just as the normal course of an investigation like this, he's the last person to be seen with her, or he's saying he's the last person to be known to be with her. Um, I think that they're they're probably looking at that, and that might be why that information has not become public at this point. Uh, I would certainly be asking him some questions about where where are your search efforts? Like, where are you trying to help here? Um, you know, was he part of the family and friends that went out there looking for her after the fact? But even before all that, on the day where she went missing, I'd really be building up a timeline of what did you do? Who did you talk to? Where did you try to go find help? Um, why didn't you call her mother and let her know that something was seriously wrong on this day? Uh, why didn't you call the police and ask for a search team to come out and to help you? I think there'd be some very tough questions, at least with as we understand this story. But please keep in mind the details that we have in this story. Uh, they're pretty weak. And if there is anyone in the Idaho area uh, that knows of a reporter that can look into this more, Give them a nudge, please. This is one of those cases that really needs someone with boots on the ground that can dig in a little bit more, talk to some people, drum up some interviews, and share that information. Um, who knows? They might have not been at this campsite at all. We might be looking in the total wrong area. I don't know. Is it possibly you that knows? If you're a person that has information on this case, please, please, please find it within yourself. Use the information in the description box below and send it to people that can actually help. There is a mother, there is a daughter, and there is a boyfriend all wondering uh, where she is. So let's see if we can help them with that. If you have friends that live in this area, please share this video with them. Let's try to raise exposure to this case. Yes, there's some press, but it's really, really thin. We need to make sure that more eyes, ears, more hearts are really devoted to this case. So if you could help me with that, I'd really appreciate it. And thank you so much for your time and attention in this video today. Uh, I can't do it without you guys. And I appreciate that there's so many of you out there that care about these cases like I do. I'll see you back here tomorrow on the Lord and Arts channel.